Okay, so in this video, we're going to show that we can integrate power series term by term, at least, uh, you know, if we're trying to find the indefinite integral, then the formula for the indefinite, indefinite integral of a power series uh, term by term is valid on the interior of the, rate of the interval of convergence. Um, but before we can do that, let's just knock out this, uh, this lemma here which is about um, how the process of differentiation and integration for power series does not alter the radius of convergence, okay? Uh, and well, so let me write down the lemma and then hopefully it'll be kind of uh, not too hard for you to believe just from looking at it that it should be true. So this is lemma 26.3. So if power series uh, sum from n equals zero to infinity of a n x to the n has radius of convergence r, then the power series so this is going to be useful for both what we talk, what we say about integration and differentiation, both. So the power series, um, on the one hand, we'll have the sum from n equals one to infinity of n a n x to the n minus one, and on the other hand, we'll have the series from n equals zero to infinity of a n over n plus one x to the n plus one. Uh, these two series also have radius of convergence r. Okay, so um, the reason that I would hope that this is not too difficult for you to believe is that the only real differences, okay, um, so these two series only substantially differ from the original series sum of a n x to the n in the introduction of a polynomial factor in the coefficients. Okay. So what I mean by that, right, is that n is a polynomial and n plus one is a polynomial, right? Of course, in this case, we're dividing by the polynomial and here we're multiplying by it, but it doesn't really matter. My point, right, is that if you go back to our discussion about, you know, exponential behavior and polynomial behavior and, uh, and you know, radius of convergence and all of that and the, like the root test and everything, right? The point is that like polynomial expressions basically don't affect the radius of convergence because when you take the nth root of any polynomial, you, you the, the, that, expression tends towards one, right? So they, these just have kind of like a no effect on the actual radius of convergence. They can affect whether the series, whether the power, the new power series converges at an endpoint. So sometimes it's like maybe the sum of a n x to the n converged at both endpoints, but then the sum of n a n x to the n minus one might only converge at one of the two endpoints or neither, you know? So, uh, those are, those are all possible, but the actual radius of convergence, which depends on the like the, the using the root test, right? That won't change if you just add in some factor of n or divide by n plus one or whatever, because these just don't grow fast enough to actually affect the limb sup of like the nth roots of the coefficients, basically. Okay, and that's basically what the proof revolves around. So uh, let's see. So let's just prove this real quick. So, um, so first note that um, 
series n a n x to the n minus one and the series n a n x to the n have the same radius of convergence, right? Because they only they're only off by a factor of x since they differ by a factor of x. So that just that can't like affect where they converge, right? Because you can just factor out x from this one and you end up with this one. Uh, so this one converges if and only if this one converges, right? So they have the same radius of convergence and that allows us to focus on this one because it's a little bit easier to talk about since all the ends like match up in this one, right? Because like here we're talking about n a n x to the n minus one. The reason for that is because that's supposed to be like the derivative, but it's kind of annoying if you're taking like the n minus one root, n minus first root of like n a n because then there's like this off by one thing. So we just want to like get around that. So this is how we do that. And then, uh, and then you can say, and then like, you know, uh, the nth root of like n a n, like that's n to the one over n a n one over n. And this converges to one as n approaches infinity, right? So the limb sup of the nth root of n a n uh, equals the lim sub of a n, right? By that's by a theorem. Um, this is a by theorem twelve point one. Okay. Since this is a convergent sequence specifically, right? We're allowed to factor out. Uh, factor out the limit of that sequence from the limb sup of the overall sequence. Okay. So, uh, you know, so, so, oh, sorry, this is one over n here. Um, so, you know, beta for n a n x to the n is the same. So the R radius of convergence is also, right? Uh, so that finishes the proof for the derivative one. And then the integral one is basically similar. So um, and of course, I'm saying derivative and integral, but we, we haven't actually shown that these series are the derivatives and in, in, in integrals of a, of a power series yet. That's the point. That's where we're heading towards. So we're kind of just like, right now, we're just treating these as like random series, basically. Uh, but uh, yeah, we will show that they are the derivative and integral of the original power series. So this one, in this one, it's like, okay, the sum of like a n over n plus one x to the n plus one has the same radius of convergence as the sum of a n over n plus one x to the n. And then the nth root of absolute value of a n over n plus one is, you know, a n to the one over n over n plus one to the one over n. And then this n plus one to the one over n, you can pretty straightforwardly show just approaches one as well. Uh, so, so, Beta is the same here too. Right. So that's that's the that that finishes this uh, lemma here. So let's just uh, quickly use this to deal with um, integration of power series. So theorem twenty six point four is uh, suppose f of x equals the sum from n equals zero to infinity of a n x to the n. Uh, and this has radius of convergence r greater than zero. Possibly in this case, r could be infinite. Yeah. 
then the integral from zero to x of f of t dt. By the way, this is actually, this is like the indefinite integral, right? Um, this is like how you should really think of indefinite integrals is just like they're a definite integral where one of the endpoints is a variable. Um, so this equals the sum from n equals zero to infinity of a n over n plus one x to the n plus one for x less than r specifically. Okay. So we're not actually saying anything. We're not even saying anything about whether the integral from zero to r, for example, exists, because it might not. Um, so we're only doing this for absolute value of x strictly less than r. OK? So um, you assume without loss of generality that x is less than 0. Uh, because, well, yeah, uh, you'll see. I mean, the, basically, the proof for x greater than zero is like almost identical to. So, yeah. Um, then, on x zero, the um, the series sum of a k t to the k uh, well yeah the partial sums right so let's just say this the partial sums fn of x equals uh, the sum from k equals zero to n of a k t to the k sorry what uh yeah let's say f of t fn of t <laughs> right so fn of t is this partial sum as a sequence they converge uniformly so the partial sums uh converge uniformly to f of t on this interval right that's because absolute value of x is strictly less than r. So this is not, it doesn't even involve like um, any of the complicated stuff from Abel's theorem at all. It's literally just that proof we did at the beginning of the lecture using the Weierstrass M test, right? That tells us that this converges uniformly on this interval. And then because the, the convergence is uniform by the, the theorem we showed in the, uh, the theorem we just showed, uh, or yeah, in, in the previous video, um, we see, so, by 25.2, right, we can integrate these. Uh, we, we can like pass the limit inside the integral here. So, or we can do it backwards, I guess. So the integral from x to zero of f of t dt is the limit from n as n approaches infinity of the integral from x to zero of this partial sum from k equals zero to n of a k t to the k. And then we can pass, now we can pass this integral inside this sum because this is just a finite sum. So it doesn't even like, there's no special thing going on here. It's just the linearity of the integral that lets us put the, integrate this finite series. It just has a finite number of terms. We can integrate it term by term, right? So, so this is the limit as n goes to infinity of the series from k equals zero to n of a k over k plus one t to the k, right? Oh, well, now that we've integrated it, sorry. Uh, actually, yeah, let me not skip that. Uh, so let's do the integral from x. So I'm moving the integral inside. A k t to the k d t. But this is easy to integrate, right? So this is now the limit as n goes to infinity of this series k equals zero to n of a 
Now it's a k over k plus one. After you integrate it, right, you get uh, x x to the k plus one here, right, which is now, or rather, sorry, negative, I guess, uh, because if we're integrating, if we're integrating from zero, from x to zero, then it's like you get a k t to the k plus one over k plus one, and then you evaluate at zero and you subtract the value at x, right? So you end up with a negative. You end up with this like minus sign. Um, so this is equal to the negative sum from k equals zero to infinity. Now, since we're taking the limit as n approaches infinity, and we know that this converges, right? Uh, we know that this converges because of what we just showed earlier in this video, the lemma, uh, which shows us that the radius of convergence is the same for the new series. Um, so this is a k over k plus one, x to the k plus one. Um, so the new series converges um, because x is less than r and we showed that the series a k over k plus one x to the k plus one has the same radius of convergence okay and of course the minus sign the like the minus sign isn't a problem because we flipped the bounders, the bounds of, of integration from what we were trying to prove, right? So, um, so by definition, which you'll see later, of course, since we haven't defined integrals, but it's a it's a basic property that um, uh, this means that the integral from zero to x of f of t dt equals the sum from k equals zero to infinity of a k over k plus one, uh, x to the k plus one. Okay, so the minus sign goes away when you flip the bounds. And uh, like I said, I mean, the proof for if x is positive is almost identical. In that case, you actually just don't even have, you just don't even have to deal with the minus sign or the flipping of the bounds or anything. You just start with zero and x here, and then you don't have a minus sign ever. So uh, yeah, I think the only reason they focused on the negative case is because that one's like more complicated or something. So by dealing with the negative case, then it's like obvious how you can deal with the positive case because it's even easier. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's all for this video. And then in the next one, uh, we'll show how this means that you can also differentiate um, because basically via the fundamental theorem of calculus, we can sort of go backwards through this theorem. So yeah, you'll see, um, yeah.